Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a lot of shit. It's going to get real, okay? We're going to be looking at attribute transfers, we're going to be looking at scattering, we're going to be looking at add nodes, etc, etc, or add sops, if I'm going to be correct about it. And I'm also going to be looking at visualizing attributes, which is very useful, so you don't have to keep using CD every time. If you're new to this, if you just clicked on this video, I'm going to be talking about some stuff I haven't explained, or I'll be doing some things that I ha like I've explained in other videos. Go and check out the the Vex tutorial that I did, uh, where I explain data types, uh, variables, uh, in a bit more detail than I do here. So yeah, uh, let's get started. I'm just going to be throwing down a grid, and that's where we'll be scattering points. So points are extremely useful because we in in Houdini a lot of the time. Since uh, points can store lots of attributes like the, the rotation through the normals, uh, uh, P scale, which is the size, uh, we have position obviously. This is a way lighter way of working than if we just use, if we just copy like massive pieces of geometry. If we just represent things as points initially, it's way lighter and we can get animation looking right, especially if you're working with you know millions of, of particles that will then turn into millions of objects. You can instance on these as well, so yeah, I won't go into all of it now, but um, so I'm going to throw down a scatter, which is an extremely useful node, and it's literally just going to scatter points onto whatever surface you have, 3D or otherwise, it will put points on it. I'm going to get rid of the um, little red thing in the middle on the grid. So the reason that this is useful is that we can um, scatter points, obviously, and then we can copy stuff to these points, or we can just use them as points and render them as particles. Um, and then we've got a lot, a lot of different options in here, like relax iterations. Essentially, what relax iterations is doing is it's um, moving points away from each other, uh, sort of like packing. Um, so it will try and correct intersections, essentially. It's a lot heavier than just not using it. Um, so if you've got tons of points, then you'll see in this bottom left-hand corner that's calculating uh, relaxed iterations uh, for a while. But sometimes you might just want to have a random scatter of particles and you can turn this off. Um, everything else is pr uh, pretty self-explanatory, like uh, global uh, seeds, which we could put $F on. And if we were emitting particles, we could you know, have a random seed every frame where it will emit randomly. Um, and we have max points, so that means that will essentially just clamp this value here, your force total count. It won't let you go over that amount, so if it is to 100, it will only let us have 100 points no matter what this value is set to. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for the scatter. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be showing you to put some color onto this as well, so if we do attribute from map, um, then I'm going to plug this into our scatter. And as you can see, they've already got uh, a node in here, so I might just use that one. Actually, it's a grid, so let's see. Have a nice gradient here, and I'm going to turn the background black, just so we can see what's going on a little easier. Uh, and the important thing to note about this is that attribute for map is not just putting color onto these points, it's doing a lot of things behind the scenes. If you double click on this, you'll see that this node seemingly single node is made up of a bunch of nodes, which is common with a lot of things in Houdini. Um, and this can be really useful to go in here and, and learn what's going on. But essentially, this is creating UVs for you. Um, it doesn't, I think it actually deletes them at the end um, or something because they don't appear when you middle click. But you can see it's adding this to the um, to these points. And generally, this wouldn't work if you were just putting a color map onto this um, so yeah, and then what we're going to want to do is an attribute transfer uh, and then this will allow us to essentially do like a fall off in a Cinema 4D or, or any other program. Uh, so if I put down an add, then this will let me add a singular point. This is an extremely powerful node um, and it's not just useful for adding a single point. <laughs> But that's what it does um, if you click here. It can also 
uh, well, you can add multiple points and if you click uh, enter or go over here and turn on your show handle, you can create multiple points and, and move them around. So there we go, we're moving stuff around now. And we've got our two points here. Um, and you can also do delete geometry but keep the points. So there we go, we've just got our points here. We don't, we don't even need to necessarily scatter. If you just want a grid formation, you can do this. Um, and you can also add polygons. So between certain points, you can, uh, you can add a line uh, via this method. So yeah, very powerful, but we're just gonna be using it to add a single point. And um, I'm gonna be transferring color to begin with. And then to make it a bit more clean, we're gonna be using an attribute because obviously we have our color here on our points that we're gonna want to retain. So now um, I'm going to talk about the color node as well. That's, that's pretty um, powerful. I'll put this on the scatter just so you can see it a bit more clearly. So by default, you'll see this um, and this is RGB. Um, so this is just changing your CD value simply. Um, you can you know change whatever class you want. So primitive won't do anything because we don't have any primitives here. We only have points. You can affect just a certain group, which I don't believe I've talked about yet, but it's a really also powerful part of Houdini, which um, allows you to create selections and, and, and sort of remember them. Um, you can not, you don't have to just do um, uh, just a, f a single color. You can do random color, all that sort of stuff. So it'll automate a lot of stuff you can do in VEX. Um, and also we've got a color picker. This is something that not a lot of people realize, but there's actually a color picker in here. If you middle click and drag, you can even drag off your window. See, like I'm color picking Adobe Edition right now. I'm recording. So you've got green. Um, and obviously you've got different uh, ways of inputting colors like HSV and uh, RGB sliders and stuff like that. But by default, it's an RGB slider. Um, as you can see, just got blue now. So let's just transfer black to white. So I'm gonna alt drag this out to get a copy set this to black. I was just using the HSV values there, but it doesn't really matter either way. And then we're going to put down the almighty attribute transfer. Um, and then as you can see, require geometry to transfer attributes to. So we want to uh, transfer attributes to our grid of particles. So I'm going to shift, click and drag, which uh, shift click will, um, or shift drag will, will do this. It will drag anything above. And if I do control while I'm dragging, it will do anything below. Just a little handy shortcut for you. So one's got to be white, one's got to be black. And as you can see, our distance threshold is way too big at the moment. So if I turn this down, we're transferring. And it's obviously very rough right now. So if I turn up the blend width, that's essentially the feather, the main ones you need to worry about. If you want to transfer specific attributes uh, instead of the instead of everything, then you just go in here and, and choose whatever uh, you want to transfer. And um, yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this over um, the top of it. So I'm going to put down a transform. So let's add, uh, move this on. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> so drag this over here onto that wire, and we do middle mouse drag, drag this off, and then I'm just going to animate this manually. I'm going to turn on real time, go a, free, uh, a second in, sorry. Probably should have done this with expressions, but whatever. Let's make it go all the way off. And I'm also going to make it linear. Let's just double check it's linear by doing, where is it? I always do the shortcut so I don't remember. So if you click V over here, then it will bring up the uh, <coughs> the uh, F curve or the, the animation editor. And if you do Control Shift F, it will bring up all channels for this node here instead of just whatever you've got selected right now. So I'm going to click H to view what uh, what's in this graph. And I'm going to do Control A, go into this list and we select linear. There we go, we've got it going. But what if I wanted to remember uh, where this point had been and sort of create like a painting effect? Well, we've got a trail node for that. 
trail salt. So if I drop that down after your transform, we, what we can do is we can set this to like 30. So this is a frame number. So you could do dollar $F. That's probably the easiest way, or you just put in the highest number you can think of. And it's going to essentially, if I single this out, let's uh, turn on our points. You're going to see that every frame it's going to record and remember where that point had been. Now this will work for geometry. So if I was to plug a sphere in here, you're going to see the geometry gets copied as well. Really powerful SOP as well. You can also calculate velocity, which is very useful for things like motion blur um, in you know certain render engines like Redshift. Um, so there we have it. Now, what can we do about manipulating these values now? Uh, what we can do is we can put down a wrangle and use our CD, but um, like I said at the beginning, I actually want to use our own attributes uh, instead of CD because I want to, you know, retain this. There's other ways that we can, you know, remember this attribute by doing like CD2, and then after it, we could do a point wrangle where we set CD to at CD2. Uh, make sure you've set this to V because it's about a vector. And there we've got it, it's working, um, but it's not very clean. So I would rather keep this as CD the entire time and create our own individual attribute for these values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete these two color values and I'm gonna put down a wrangle. So I'm going to call this transact, so transact attribute. So we're going to create a float value, which is going to be trans, which will equal one here. Make sure you put the semicolon at the end. And um, then trans attribute, which is going to be zero. If this was an integer, it would not work. It's just going to be either black and white, and it's not going to work. So if I go on to here now, uh, and I just want to transfer the trans attribute, so I'm going to keep that there and I can't see what's happening now. It's all gone. If I go into the geometry spreadsheet, which will give us a list of all the attributes for each point, uh, you can see up here next to the section that we're on points. So the trans attribute, everything's one. Some things are coming down though. Uh, so it is working. So what we need to do is we need to visualize this. So we can either visualize it by doing at CD equals trans or we could right click here on visualization and we can do add to our attribute transfer uh, a color. And let's set the class to what it is, which is point, a point attribute, and put in here trans. So by default, this is, let's do a ramped attribute. So there we go. We've got an interesting little visualization there. And this is only going to be present on this node. This is not actually the color. If I was to put a null after this, you'll see that it's only being visualized here, which is really useful. And it's great if you've got a lot of attribute transfers in your scene, say you're doing like a shock wave or something uh, and everything's coming out from that. It's very useful. And obviously uh, we've got other types like uh, we can do not a color, we could do a marker, which is very useful. If you've got a few points that you want to see what the values are. So as you can see, those are listing out the full, uh, the full values there. It's just a float, so it's just listing one. So let's change this back to color now. Um, cool. And now how are we going to manipulate these this attribute, which is just black and white, maybe just to make it easier for you to understand. Let's just get rid of these crazy colors and just do what it actually it represents, which is just black. Uh, so now let's put down a point wrangle and we can use this attribute however we want. We can do at p.y equals at trans and we're going to get a little valley being created here. We can do P scale, we can do whatever we want. That is scattering 
Uh, I'm probably going to do another one of these on volume scattering, which um, is really, really useful as well. So essentially scattering points inside of objects. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, just drop in the comments and I'll try and get back to them. Thanks for watching, guys.